Over the past three decades, I have built up the largest collection of Victoria Crosses in the world. More than 200 awards, all to British and Commonwealth servicemen. But while pursuing a lifelong passion for bravery, I have always been adamant that courage is displayed by individuals on both sides of a conflict. And to prove my point, I have come to France and Germany to salute the gallantry of the legendary Manfred von Richthofen, better known as simply the Red Baron. With an astonishing 80 confirmed kills, all achieved here on the Western Front, the Red Baron became the most successful fighter pilot of the Great War. The Red Baron was born in Lower Silesia, now part of modern-day Poland, on May 2, 1892. He became a cadet, aged just 11, in 1903, and was commissioned as a cavalry officer in 1912. However, after the outbreak of the First World War in August 1914, it became clear that a new world of machine guns, improved artillery weapons and barbed wire entanglements had changed the face of warfare forever. In particular, a new and potentially glamorous area of combat was offered by the recently invented flying machine, later the aeroplane. Initially, rival pilots waved as they flew past each other, but soon they were taking revolvers, machine guns and other weapons into their cockpits to try to shoot one another down. It was here in the skies above northern France that the Red Baron began his flying career. At first, a backseat observer and then a fully-fledged fighter pilot, having transferred to the Imperial German Army Air Service in May of 1915. I have not gone to war in order to collect cheese and eggs, but for another purpose, he explained in his transfer request. It seems life on the ground, the great war becoming renowned for its trench warfare, was not for him. His early days in the skies were not successful ones. He struggled to control his aircraft and actually crashed his first solo flight. However, his determination to succeed, coupled with his hunting instincts, soon turned him into a skilled aviator as he joined a recently formed fighter squadron. It was on September the 17th, 1916, in the latter days of the Battle of the Somme, that he gained his first confirmed kill, shooting down a two-seater British plane. In January 1917, after his 16th confirmed kill, he was awarded the prestigious Blue Max military honour and in the same month he assumed command of his own squadron. True to his flamboyant nature, he decided to paint his plane bright red. Soon other squadron members had their aircraft painted in vivid colours, earning the nickname the Flying Circus. In April 1917, his squadron enjoyed unparalleled success in that month alone, the Red Baron shot down 22 British aircraft, including four in a single day. In his autobiography, he wrote of this period of his flying career, I had shot down 50 aeroplanes. That was a good number, but I would have preferred 52. So went up one day and had another two. From July 1917 onwards, the Red Baron was flying in a distinctive three-winged Fokker triplane, and the German propaganda machine labelled him the Red Fighter Pilot. In July 1917, too, he received a serious head wound in a dogfight, and despite his injuries, he made a forced landing behind his own lines. Against doctor's advice, he returned to flying, and on April the 20th, 1918, he gained his 79th and 80th kills. However, the next day, his luck finally ran out. Shortly after 11 a.m., while flying near the Somme River, he received a single bullet wound to the torso while pursuing a sop with camel at low altitude. To this day, there is controversy over whether he was shot down by a rival pilot or from the ground. In the final moments of his life, he managed to land his aircraft in a field of sugar beet, just feet away from where I am standing. 
in a sector controlled by Australian Imperial forces. He died in his cockpit aged 25, and it was reported that his final word was kaput. Within hours, souvenir hunters had dismantled his plane. Initially, the Red Baron was buried with full military honours at Bertangle the day after his death. But it was here at Free Corps that his remains were moved in 1921 when the French approved the establishment of a German military cemetery. He lay here amongst more than 17,000 fellow officers and soldiers until 1925. Then, at the insistence of the German government, his remains were transferred to the Invalid Cemetery in Berlin, where many Prussian military heroes and leaders are buried. And in Berlin, he was honored with a state funeral. While in Germany, I met up with the current Baron von Richthofen, who describes himself as the nephew of the Red Baron. At his home in Munich, he served tea and pretzels and gave me an insight into the noble Prussian family and the Red Baron's early life. He told me how the Red Baron is now better known in Britain than he is in his native Germany, where there is a reluctance to dwell on the outcome of the two world wars. This is the fourth and one hopes final resting place of the Red Baron at a vast cemetery in Wiesbaden, Germany. It's family plot that he shares with sister and brother. His headstone has the inscription Rittmeister, that's cavalry captain, Manfred Frieher, Baron von Richthofen. Uh, he was moved here in 1975 because during the Cold War, the Invalid Cemetery formed the boundary that split Berlin. I feel privileged to have come to Germany and France to pay my own tribute to the Ace of Aces, who has achieved such enduring fame that a century after his death, he is still widely hailed as the greatest fighter pilot who has ever lived.